So I guess we'll just drop the bear and take care of this thing first. enough I guess hey what is up guys Gitarok here welcome back to another Genshin Impact video all right so today finally I have completed my Cleese build all right so if you guys have not followed me on my live stream I do uh, try to farm as much artifacts as I can for Klee and have been doing so for the last couple of I don't know weeks all right so Let's have a look at what I decided to use on Klee. Okay, so stats-wise, I don't think my Klee is that impressive. A lot of things could be improved further, but she's currently level 80. So I have about 1.8k attack, okay? So I have about... Uh, I don't know if defense matters on her, I don't think it does. You're not supposed to build her on defense, by the way. Elemental Mastery, 87. Okay, so... 46.5% uh, crit rate and 120% uh, crit damage. So I'm not entirely sure if my crit rate can be increased further. And I have a 71.4% pyro damage bonus. Uh, regarding the crit rate, I am using this weapon on Klee, Solar Pearl. So this is a battle pass exclusive weapon. So you can choose this as an option. Of course, the Black Sword is like going to be better for majority of the players, but this is pretty good if you have Klee for sure. Now why it's good is because it gives crit rate. So as you can see, this weapon is right now level 80. So I can further increase this to level 90 once I reach AR 50. So I'm not sure if that will increase my crit rate significantly. Maybe I have a chance to increase it to 28% or so. As you can see, this is only refinement rank 1. Alright, so this particular solar shine, normal attacks, hits increase elemental skill and elemental burst damage by 20% for 6 seconds. So if I use normal attack, all right, and I hit the enemy, and then I go and use elemental skill and elemental burst within six seconds, they will have the 20% increase, which is incredible. All right, so likewise, elemental skill or elemental burst hits increase normal attack damage by 20%. So this is a very, very good effect. So the only downside that I can think of of this particular secondary effect right here is this only increased normal attack damage. It does not increase Klee's charge attack. So Klee is uh, she's sort of a charge attack user, so sometimes when you use your skill, once in a while you want to use charge attack and hit. So especially when your Klee has the flower, right? So I don't think you can activate the flower when you're not fighting an opponent. So let me see if I can grab an opponent and I can show it to you guys. Alright, so now, right now you can see there's one small flower surrounding Klee. So this flower right here. So what it does is your charge attack will consume no stamina. Alright, as you guys can see. So this is basically Klee's talent at uh, this one, Sparkling Burst. So when Klee's charge attack results in, wait, not this one, this one, Pounding Surprise. Yeah, so when Jumpty Dumpty and Normal Attacks deal damage, Clear has a 50% chance to obtain Explosive Spark. This Explosive Spark is consumed by the next charge attack. So, cause no stamina and deals 50% increased damage. So, Klee is a charge attack monster. You want to always be chaining your normal attack and then use charge attack and then probably use your E skill once in a while and then use normal attack and then use charge attack. So, that's how ideally you want to use Klee. And there is a lot of uh, animation cancel technique that you can use. Alright, so my favorite is if you press twice, you can uh, basically jump like this just to cancel your third one. If you use your third one, the animation takes very long. So you can spam, uh, basically spam double twice, just jump cancel the third animation so that that way you don't waste your, your time basically trying to shoot the third one. And also you can use this technique where you hold down forward and then just try to look out for the uh, solar Pearl in this case, so that your click can just use the first attack initially. So this will take some practice for sure, alright? So you have to time it correctly. So as you can see, uh, mine is not super perfect. I have to... There's a lot of gaps where I can do it slightly earlier. 
but if you do it perfectly, your Klee will not move from the position at all. Alright, so let's have a look at the talents. So talents, as you can see, level 8, level 6, level 6, if your Klee is the main damage dealer, and in my case she is, you want to have this up to level 8 for sure. Alright, so level 8 is very important. So having this should be a priority if your Klee is a main damage dealer. So right now I can't do uh, increase this anymore because it needs my character to be Ascension Phase 6. So the next one I'm going to work on is the Jumpty Dumpty because this damage is pretty insane. I'm going to need this Wolf Ring of Gorya's thing, unfortunately. So yeah, uh, that's what I have on the Klee. So when it comes to artifacts, okay, so obviously there are a lot of choices out there. So for me, I decided to opt for two pieces of Crimson Witch and two pieces of Gladiator. Now in my opinion, alright, this is just strongly my opinion, I do think that this set is going to be better. The Lava Walker set. So why is that? So this particular set is insane on Klee because 4-piece increased damage against enemies affected by Pyro by 35%. Now in case you guys are not familiar, Klee always deals Pyro attack damage and always applies the Pyro status to the enemy because Klee is a mage, alright, she is a Catalyst user. So this is standard for all Catalyst users. Klee is not Diluc, alright, Klee is not Xiangling. They do she does not deal physical damage at all. Which is why this is always going to be good. This is going to be ideally better for her. 35% uh, increase in damage is for everything. It's for your normal attack, it's for your uh, charge attack, it's for everything. Your ulti, everything. You will get 35% more increase in damage, which is insane. But this is not an easy set to obtain because you need 4 piece. So you need to get very very good. Like not just main stat but sub stat for all the 4 piece. It's going to be really hard. As you can see, this one gives me elemental mastery, HP percent, HP percent, defense percent, defense percent. And you can see, uh, it's quite cancerous to try to get, like look at this, <laughs> animal damage bonus for, for a lava walker set. Pyro damage bonus, okay this is good, right, HP percent, physical damage bonus. Uh, again, like, okay this one I do have attack percent, but it's going to take a while. For sure, if you really want to farm for a very good set of this one. So, which is why, ideally, I feel like the two piece of Crimson Witch and two piece of Gladiator is going to be better and going to be more budget friendly. Alright, it's easier for you to slot in more things because you only need two of each piece. If you have a bat uh, goblet, for example, you can substitute with a bat uh, with a flower and then get another one on the other set. Right now, uh, I have, let's start off with the goblet. Okay, so my Goblet gives Pyro damage bonus. This is the only thing that is not a 5 star or it's not a yellow artifact. So I hope to get this to a yellow one. I do have a couple laying around so I'm gonna focus on upgrading this first. And then this is what I have on her flower, the Witch's Flower of Blaze. This one gives attack percent, crit rate percent. Okay, these two are good. The other two is like meh, don't really need those. Alright, Gladiator's Destiny. So this one gives crit rate. It gives energy recharge, which is okay. HP and flat defense is a bit triggering, but it is what it is. You know, I've been farming for so long, it's so hard to obtain the perfect one. Energy recharge is better on her than you think. Alright, having energy recharge on her is, is actually not bad, because she can benefit from it. If she can spam her ult, which is an elemental burst, it deals so much damage. It's going to increase her potential significantly. Alright, so this one, uh, Goblet. Witches and time. I have an attack percent right here. Crit damage percent, HP percent. As you can see, a lot of energy recharge, HP. And lastly, the this one is the only one that doesn't belong in the set. So I grabbed this. I thought this was good because this one has crit damage percent. So I wanted to get her crit damage up. But after upgrading this, I sort of regret it. It didn't roll any into the attack percent at all. It rolled once into defense. I think twice into defense percent and twice into Elemental Mastery. It did not roll into attack. I was so angry. <laughs> I was so angry. But it is what it is. Alright? It is what it is. I'm just gonna leave with this for a while. So for me, the upgrade next will be the Gladiator. Alright, enough bumbling. Let's showcase her damage. Okay, as you can see, alright. In case you guys are not familiar, Ruin Guards have high physical resistance. So if you hit them, you can see you deal like 300 damage, 300 damage, right? So let's use Klee. So as you can see, 
that deals about 3,000, 4,000. Alright, so 1.6k, so that one did not crit. 3.5k crit, 3.5k crit, 1.6k did not crit. So again, I want to show you guys the attributes. So she has 46.5% crit rate, so she will only crit 46.5% of the time. Alright, so almost 50%, half half she will not crit. So uh, I've been reading a lot and I heard a lot of players say that ideally this is... You want to go for 1 to 2 ratio for this. And my crit rate is a bit on the lower side. Ideally I should get 60%. So ideally her charge attack is what deals the most damage as you can see. 10k, easily, boom. And then you can use her, her Q. Alright, her elemental burst also deals quite a lot. Alright, so let's find one more Ruin Guard right here to destroy, okay, so this is my favorite one. Alright, so again, uh, as you can see, ideally my Klee relies a lot on her damage having to crit. If she doesn't crit, she deals about 1.6, 1.5k, which is an average uh, skill, right? I mean average damage, but if she can crit, she can consistently deal about 3 to 4k. So ideally that's a strat on using her. Oh, no stamina. The one did not crit, you can easily tell. So charge attack, if she actually crits on charge attack, it will deal about 10k. So again, let's try and apply the, the animation cancel technique that uh, we used earlier. So you can do this. So this will always use her charge attack, I mean sorry, her, her first normal hit attack. And in that case, you can basically get rid of enemies faster. To increase uh, Klee's damage passively, the best way is to just include one more pyro character in the party. Because if you guys are not aware, okay, so the elemental resonance for having two pyro characters, alright, so you will get affected by cryo for 40% less time and also increase attack by 25%. So this is very good on Klee. Klee herself is a pyro character. So you just include like a Xiangling or Amber. Even if you don't use them, Klee will get 25% damage bonus boost. Alright, so it's pretty, pretty good. Alright, so let's see if we can take care of this guy. So remember, you want to always ch uh, mix up the charge attacks a little bit. So ideally, so I usually like to wait for a bit before I can use her, like look at that. So now I have my E and I have my Q again, because I have almost sort of the energy recharge build. So it's really really good on Klee actually. So your ulti is actually your main source of damage as well as a Klee. If your Klee is a main damage dealer, of course. Because uh, as far as I know, when you use Klee's Q, if you swap out to a different character, that Q disappears. Which makes Klee not a very good support because some supports like Sing Chu, for example, if you use Q, his skill still stays in the battle even if you swap him out, right? So Klee does not. So you have to take that into consideration. Okay, so let's try and see if we can one-shot this boss with Klee. I never tried this before actually. So I guess we'll just drop the bear and take care of this thing first. Alright. Alright, close enough I guess. Of course with the help of Xiangling and Barbara, uh, you can do it. But with Klee alone, maybe she will need to do it two tries. In case you guys are wondering, Barbara do have this weapon. This is a very good weapon, alright. Trilling Tales of Dragon Slayers. So when you switch characters, alright, uh, the new character will get, in this case Klee, right, will get 48% increased in attack for 10 seconds. So this helps a lot for sure. And you don't have to worry about getting the refinement. I mean refinement, yes, but you don't have to worry about getting this ascending. Alright, you only worry about the refinement and this should be easily... You know, this is a very very good book. So consider using this on your support, Barbara, for sure. 
All right, so Klee, what do you guys think? And she is my main damage dealer. I will continue to work on her for sure, but I think I'm going to stop uh, upgrading her artifacts for a while. I'm going to start working on the other characters that I have, like Beidou or Xingqiu. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below and what build are you guys using on your Klee currently at the moment. As always, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it. And I'd love to see you guys in the next one. Have a nice day. Goodbye.